my grandmother, well, she left me three million dollars of inheritance money, and that was so much money for me. I'm barely 20 years of age. I don't even know what to do with this money. Well, get this. My stepmother, who, by the way, hates my guts, decides that, oh no, you're not going to have this money. I'm going to take it. Well, she resorted to violence, manipulation, and narcissism, and the only person who stepped in to save me was my biological mother, and guys, I have so much to tell you. Hi there. Part of this story I heard from my mom and grandmother, and the other part I witnessed it myself. I'm the product of a union that never really happened. My father happened to be the only child of his mother, and my grandmother grew up in the days of the Great Depression in America, and she resorted to making dresses just to survive. Her sewing business gradually turned into a chain of tailor shops, here and there, and that was how she made a little name for herself, with name, well, came fortunes, and with fortunes came mistakes. She got pregnant by a guy who already had a wife and kids, and she was hurt by the deceit that she decided to train my dad alone. Grandma did her best at training my dad, but he just turned out wayward. It did not matter what she did. He always had an appetite for lewdness, and Grandma did her best to tolerate her son's excuses. Well, she knew where he was headed, and it was only a matter of time before he started having kids all over the globe. And that's how she decided on getting him a wife. A responsible, homely woman... Who would be willing to build a home with him, and I think this was definitely her first mistake. You see, Grandma finds her only son, aka my father, and his wife, my mother, who was responsible and reasonable, but my father declined. It's true, to a certain degree, that people should be left to make their choices when it came to the matters of the heart. But I would disagree in this case. My father tells his mom that he already had someone whom he wants to get married to. My grandma, not wanting to seem as though she had taken the right of her full-grown son, asked him to bring the lady home. According to grandma's account, she knew the lady whom my father brought home was not his wife the moment she laid eyes on her. The lady was called Elena. She was Mexican. From her dress, you could tell she was wayward as my father, and it was not surprising, though, as... They had both met at a gambling house, and Grandmother suspected she was a call girl. Grandma told my dad she was not going to support any union between my father and his, quote, dream wife. And if he chose to continue with the relationship, she would take away the access he had to her money. You see, my father was not happy, and he did not hide it. Nope, not at all. He felt his mother would come around after some days, but Grandma remained resolute about her decision. My family gave in to marry my mother. Even though he did not love her, he could not do without Grandma's money. Grandma was not moved by the fact that he misunderstood her intentions for him. He was an adult with brains of a child who lacked self-control. The wedding preparations were ongoing, and my mother was already living in the house in which my father and grandma lived. She soon overheard him one day, professing his love to someone over the phone. My mother listened as he claimed he was only getting married to her so he would not be denied his inheritance. A marriage of convenience, I see. My mother did not want to force herself into a marriage that would only bring her pain, and so... She told Grandmother that she was backing out of it. Grandma was not happy, but there was nothing she could do to make my mother change her mind. The marriage was called off, but my mother discovered two weeks later that she was pregnant. My father was simply unbelievable. He could claim to not love my mother, but readily got her pregnant while the wedding preparations were going on. He did not deny responsibility for the pregnancy either. My mother was contemplating getting rid of the baby, but Grandma would not let her do that. This was going to be the first grandchild from her only child, and she was not going to let my mom just get rid of me. She promised my mom that both of us would be well taken care of, and my mother would live with her till she decides to get married or not. This was how I came into the picture. 
My birth did not bring any affection from my father to my mother at all. My father tried being there for me at the beginning, and I think this was because Grandma had compelled him to out of responsibility. But his irresponsibility kicked back in, and he just left my upbringing to my mom and grandma. My mom was hurt by my father's negligence, even though they were never married. Her anger was that he was neglecting me. She brought up the issue with Grandma, and Grandma, who had tried calling her son to order in the past, has pleaded with her to be patient. Grandma had brought Mom into her business in a managerial role. This was not just means of getting her mind off of things. This was mostly because Mom was good at it, and her son had zero interest. Things almost escalated one day when Dad told Mom he wanted to get married and was ready to start a family. I was five years old at the time, and I clearly remembered what happened. Grandma was not against him getting married. After all, she had advised my mother to do the same if she ever saw someone like the she liked. Well, Grandma, however, made a remark about my father claiming to be ready to raise a family, and she asked how well he had taken care of the one he had. She referred to my mom, and more especially me, and Dad went out to say both Mother and I were doing great, as we did not lack anything. His statement provoked Grandma, who asked how much he had invested in my upbringing so far. He noted that my mom and I were doing great because of her, and aged folks are known to speak their minds without minding who's offended, and that was just what my grandmother did. She told him, he was not ready for marriage or to start a family as he did not even own a job. She sarcastically asked if he planned on getting married, bringing his wife to his house, and using her money to take care of them. My father did not take the words of his mother lightly. He accused her of being against his progress as he claimed there was nothing wrong with him and his wife living in the same house which he would end up inheriting after she was gone. My father talks about him inheriting Grandma's house after her demise. It angers her. She was just 69 at the time and had no plans of dying anytime soon. Besides, she knew that it could emotionally affect my mother and me if my father brought home into another woman, just to live in the same house that we stayed. She asked him to get out of her house, and that was when my mom, who had been listening, came to intervene. My mother decided Grandma was supportive of my father in his decision to get married. She noted that she could move out of the house with me and rent an apartment while my dad lived with us and his wife. Grandma did not welcome the idea, as she's already fond of us, but Mom persisted by reminding her that Dad was still her son. Grandma finally gave in and asked Dad to bring home the woman he wanted to get married to. My father brought the lady he wanted to get married to, and to the amazement of everyone, it was Elena. The very lady Grandma rejected five years back. Elena had not changed a bit. She still appeared as, well, <laughs> loosely dressing, and lacked character too. Grandma's decision from five years ago remained the same today. She reiterated her no, and... My father began throwing tantrums and all, but Grandma said he was free to get married to Elena if he so desired, but one thing was going to be crystal clear. She would not let Elena live in her house, neither would she let a dime of her money go in her direction. My mother, who had talked to Grandma earlier on to support her son, was now glad with Grandma's reaction. I think the fact that Elena was the lady whom Dad wanted to see even after they got married angered her. Grandma went further to threaten to kick him out of her house and will at her properties to charity if he went ahead to get married to Elena. My father was absolutely speechless after Grandma issued her threat. Elena, who could see my father's hands were tied by his mother, now fell to her knees and began pleading with Grandma to let the marriage go on. She said getting married would ensure she was given resident visa in the country, as she was an illegal immigrant who was now facing deportation. Grandma wasn't bothered about what was going to befall of her, and that was when Alina said she should do so for the sake of the child she was carrying. Wow, the mention of Elena carrying grandmother's second grandchild made her pause for a bit. 
Every mother would, you know. Grandma, not wanting to make her grandchild suffer because of the mother, decides to be considerate. She tells them that no wedding would take place, but Elena would move into the house till she was done with the childbirth. As regards to the deportation thing, Grandma said since her business was registered, she would help Elena get a temporary work permit, otherwise known as Employment Authorization Document, EAD, from the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Elena began living with us, and my father gave her the attention he never gave to me or my mother. She began working at Grandma's business after she had given birth, and she had no other option as to face deportation if she didn't. After she had worked for about four months, Grandma called her and my dad. She gave them a good amount of money and asked that they moved out of her house, and I believe her reason for doing so was that she was not very comfortable with Elena. You see, Elena and my father would move out with their son, which was my stepbrother, but Elena still worked at Grandma's establishment. We never heard from Dad for years till we received news that he was seriously ill. He had caught an STD and was undergoing some treatment, and Grandma covered the cost of the treatment, but it was not necessarily successful. Elena soon called the house to inform us, well, he's passed away. Grandma, my mother, and I cried when we got the news, and Dad had not lived responsibly, but he was still my dad and Grandma's child. We all paid Elena a visit, the three of us, who, by the way, never really liked her, but we were still sorry for her loss, and, I mean, it was our loss too, you know. We got to the house to find Elena, who was to be the chief mourner, had not even cried the way that we were, and she even began bashing my father for leading the kind of life that he did. My dad had apparently continued going after women after moving in with her. It was so hypocritical, hearing her complain about my father not paying her and their son attention after he had treated my mom and me the same way because of her. My dad was buried, and Elena carried on with her life. She did not apply for a break from work, and even when her co-workers suggested it, she refused. We had lived in peace, as everyone minded their business, and this is until recently, after my grandma passed away of natural causes. She was 84. I'm 20 years, and the death of grandma has caused, well, seemed to have upset some folks. I'll need to talk about it, as every detail is crucial to your understanding of the story, so here we go. My mother had found love, got married, and moved in with her husband, and she still managed Grandma's business pretty well. I was left to take care of Grandma, whose, by the way, her health was failing. We could have arranged for a caregiver to come over, as I was supposed to go to business school, but I deferred the admission. I wanted to take care of Grandma myself, and I'm glad I stayed with her till she drew her last breath. I reached out to my mother just to let her know what had happened. She rushed over to the house and had an ambulance take her to the remains of Grandma to a mortuary while I called Elena to inform her about Grandmother's demise. Her response was, well, void of any sympathy. It was simply like she had been anticipating Grandmother's death for a while and Elena never went to the house to ask about the burial plans or anything. My mother handled the preparation and told her all about it. Elena said she would see if it was going to be feasible for her to make it. Well, that was so darn insulting. How could one contemplate missing the burial of a grandmother? My mother flared up and questioned what she would be doing on the day as every worker that worked for grandma would be there too just to pay their last respects. Elena clapped back at my mother and said that covering which she had enjoyed over the years was now gone, and she had no right to talk to her of any way she pleased. My mother did not stress the matter further. She did not see the use of her presence there anyways. Elena did show up for the burial, but she did not show up like one who was mourning. She made comments about it being time, quote, The old lady left the scene. My mother did her best to ignore Elena because she did not know how she would react and she did not want to make a giant scene. Elena, however, found her. You would think she wanted to say something responsible and reasonable, but she just asked a question. 
Her question was regarding when Grandmother's will would be read. And you know what? That's just disgusting. Grandma was not a day old in the earth, and Elena was asking about the property that would be allocated to her and my stepbrother, Carlos. Thankfully, my mother held herself together and simply walked away. Well, Grandma's will was the next thing to do, and my mother was trying to evade the whole event. Decided it was just time for it to be read, so. Grandma had no surviving relations except for me, my mom, Elena, and, well, her son. So, the reading of the will took place yesterday, and it was done at the house where I had lived with Grandma. Elena showed up to the house with her son, and you could tell her celebratory mood was a result of anticipating what would be given to her and her son. She even commented on how great things were going to be now. Grandma was no more. I believe my mother's thoughts were the same as mine, and I quote you this. If only Grandma knew Elena was such a jerk, she would not include her in the will at all. Well, guys, it looks like the lawyer starts to arrive now, so. He noted that Grandma had altered her will just two weeks before she died, and he went straight to reading the will, and he noted that the only things Grandmother had left behind were her business, the house, and some savings in her bank account that mounted to almost, well, three million dollars. Ah, oh, when he said that, there was tension in the air, and he began disclosing what each person had received. The business was handed down to my mother. She's no longer the acting manager. She's not going to answer to Grandma anymore. She was now the owner of the business. Elena wasn't really happy, as she knew that it meant she was beneath my mother, but she kept calm as she could be compensated with other things. Well, the house, it was given to me. The final thing remaining was $3 million in Grandmother's bank, and guess who was ready for it? Elena, who was already irritated. Well, she had her hopes up high, and it came as a blow to her when the lawyer informed us that the money was passed on to me. Grandma wanted me to use it in establishing myself when I get out of business school. Elena flared up, and she began throwing these tantrums, cursing Grandma, and accusing us of manipulating Grandmother to change her will. She said her son was a legitimate member of the family who was entitled to share a little bit of whatever Grandma left behind. Grandma was simply not a fool. She had been seeing right through Elena and her son, which was my stepbrother Carlos, who, by the way, was threading the same path as his father, our father. Uh, Carlos was called Carlos de Callis by his friends. The attorney who had read out the will wanted to take his leave, and he was no longer comfortable with the things how they were going. But Elena physically attacked him. That's right. She claimed he was an accomplice to the robbery that just occurred there, and this woman was just unbelievable. She did not consider the fact that the attorney was a man who could easily overpower her. She just threatened to not rest until what belonged to her and her son was given to them. The attorney managed to break free of her grasp and run away. Well, my mother told her she missed it by claiming we robbed her. Mom said robbery was when you belong or property was taken from you without your consent, but noted that we did not have her belongings and what we had just inherited were never hers. She even promised to make Alina see hell if she did not stay away from us. I've become a millionaire and a house owner at the tender age of 18, and I don't feel sorry for my stepmother and brother one bit. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. I have some exciting updates for you today, because today's story is about to take an absolute turn. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 100,000 subscribers. Also, if you want daily videos, the best way to know when I upload is by subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. Let's go ahead and jump into update number one out of four. I've barely been a millionaire for three days and Carlos has decided I won't know any peace. He's been calling for the past few days to ask for monetary favors as he claimed he was in need and his mother was broke. 
She has always been broke, and according to my mother, she had developed a habit of borrowing money from her colleagues at work, and would promise to pay the back by the end of the month. Her salary was never enough, and this was because she was poor in management. I was not able to help Carlos as I was yet to sign the legal documents that would see the money transferred to me. Even if I had the money, I don't think I'm at a place where I'm willing to help Carlos out. The whole thing just seems a bit off, and Carlos and I really barely talk. There's no bad blood between us, but the circumstances of things with our parents simply did not help, fostering a good relationship between the both of us. Besides, he is, quote, Carlos the Callis for a reason, who lives carelessly and I don't want to have close relationship with someone who lives that kind of life that he does. So, I told him I was not able to offer him any help yet, and I decided to see my mother and let her know about the recent development. I got to the office and I found my mom had called a meeting with a new boss with her staff and she was reshuffling everything. I'd thought that first, well, my mother would do the moment she assumed office was fire Elena, but oh boy, I was wrong. Elena had talked about how great things would be now that grandmother was gone and mom wanted to show her that things would definitely be great, just not for her. The whole of her staff were gathered, and they stood up as she walked into the room. Elena included. The humiliation was written all over Elena's face. She had endured my mother as the temporal manager when Grandma was alive, as a mother could not take certain decisions like firing her without Grandma's approval. But the reverse is the case now that Mother is the owner of the business. Total submission from her is non-negotiable. My mother made some comments about how Grandma's legacy would be upheld before she went into the business of the day. She reshuffled people's positionings, and up until then, Elena held a little position of honor that did not require much work at all. But my mother took it from her and placed where she was much now required from her. Mom dismissed everyone by saying the very statement Elena had said when she came to hear Grandmother's will reading, and I quote you this, Things would be greater from now on, and I knew, and I'm sure Elena did too, that the whole thing was simply targeted at her. Mother smiled as Elena, who was pained, could do nothing but walk away in silence. This was Mom's plan, to not immediately fire Elena, but to keep her close and humiliate her before kicking her out. Mom and I sat down to talk, and I told her about Carlos's recent disturbances. Mother told me to keep him at a distance as it made sense he would want to exploit the situation. Now he felt I was a millionaire. Typical opportunist like his mother, I'd already made up my mind to stay as far away from him as possible, even before mom's advice. Update number two. Guys, things have gotten interesting in the past few days. I want to tell you about it. Mom's finally fired Elena, as you well know from the last update, and Elena had it coming a long time ago. Elena had taken the reshuffling thing really hard, and she could not deal with the fact that she had lost, and there was nothing that she could do about it. Well, there was something she could do, and that was gossiping and spreading rumors behind Mother's back. She went behind Mother's back, telling everyone that they lacked understanding of the true nature of the business, and the boss... She said all manner of things about my mom, and Elena was telling folks my mom was a thief, a manipulator who always had a thing for just reaping where she did not sow. She even claimed the my mother had manipulated grandma into signing off her inheritance to her, and me, while letting her and her son go absolutely empty-handed. I would be leaving for my business school in a few weeks, so mom suggested I always come around just to spend time with her and see how a business was actually ran. The major reason I agreed to do so was so I could see the daily humiliation of Elena. I was a regular face at the workplace, but I could not help noticing the odd way certain staff looked at me when I was around. I soon learned about the rumor, and I brought it to my mother's attention ASAP. It didn't take much investigation to know where the rumor had originated from. My mother immediately exercised her, quote, boss power. 
She gathered her stuff and started by asking staff if any of them had any form of issues with her. As expected, no one, including Elena, indicated. Mother then began telling them that she was the boss and she should not or would not apologize for it. With that being said, she fired Elena right there on the spot and promised to fire both, well, the prosecute also for liability and anyone who would call her names or accuse her of something she never did. The atmosphere went absolutely cold and the whole staff turned to look at Elena, who they felt would fall on her knees and beg my mother for the job. Mom was on her way out when Elena began calling her name and she had peddled in the rumor. From the window, where I looked, I could see Mom wanted to get physical with Elena, but she just refrained as a boss, physically fighting her ex-staff would not look so nice now, would it? My mom had the security guy throw Elena out, and Elena just kept breathing out threats of not letting things die down without getting a bit of justice. My mom called it a bluff, and I think that's what it is too. The only thing she can do now is go lick her wounds. Update number three. Hey guys, so it's actually been just a few months, and this is because I've been away at business school. I recently returned to the house, and I've never been so scared in my entire life. That's right. I was so scared three days ago. It's not about ghosts or anything like that, no. You see, my life was threatened not by ghosts, but by humans. I had asked my mother about Elena, and she said Elena had been incognito for a few months. I laughed when I heard it because this was someone who had threatened to not let us have peace if we did not give her a share of the inheritance. So, I was at home still trying to do some cleaning in the house when Elena and Carlos showed up at my home. I was shocked as I was not expecting either of them. Elena began asking me to help them out with some money as things were not so great with them, and yeah, I had money, but I was not willing to give her a dollar. Not after she threatened my mother and me, so I politely asked them to leave my house, and that's when their plea turned into something a bit more violent. Elena and Carlos began accusing me of stealing and depriving them of what was theirs. They claimed the house I was asking them to leave was not supposed to be mine in the first place. I was starting to become scared, but I tried to firmly ask them to leave and even threatened to call the police on them, but that only made the matters worse. They asked how I intended to call the cops. Well, their question gave me a few chills as it was an indirect way of saying that they had plans for me. They began walking towards me and that's when I decided to act. I had to run out of the house through the back door and I ran to my mother's office and everybody was shocked to see the daughter of their boss dressed in her nightwear. My mother was horrified to see me looking the way I did. She took me into her office and asked me, What is wrong? I mean, I was visibly shaking when I tried relating what happened to my mother. She was grateful I was not hurt and she immediately called the cops. The cops immediately went to our house. Elena and Carlos were not there, though. They had taken a few items from the house and left. The police are currently searching for them, and I'm staying at my mother's place. Well, at least until I feel safe again. I'm going to stay here for a while. Update number four. This is the final update. I've gone back to my house, and this is because the issue of Elena and Carlos had been dealt with. Let me tell you about it. I stayed with my mother and her husband while the police searched for my stepmother and brother. They were still in hiding, but I started receiving a few threatening messages. These messages were from anonymous sources who claimed my mother and I were thieves who lived a life that was meant for another. Although they were anonymous, we knew where they were coming from. This made my mother pressure the law enforcement agents who put in more effort in finding Elena and her son. I was at my mom's office one day when a call came in from a private number. The caller behind the phone was a man who had a Mexican accent and he demanded my mother and I both make restitution to those who had defrauded. I knew who the defrauded people were, Elena and Carlos. 
I gave my mother an update, and after she informed the cops about the calls, they suggested we use the situation to our advantage. A plot was devised, with my mother feigning to have dropped the charges against them while the cops stopped the manhunt. My mother texted Elena to tell her that she had dropped the charges and was willing to listen to her demands so everybody could be at peace. Elena called back within seconds. Seconds after Mother had sent the text. A meeting was arranged and Elena and Carlos were to meet with my mom at the house which I inherited. Unknown to them, the police, they were waiting. They walked into the building with an air of pride and victory and my mother asked Elena to promise to put an end to the threatening messages and calls if we gave them part of the inheritance. Elena did not even bother denying it. She said that if my mom and I could pay for her and Carlos off with $500,000, then we would never see nor hear from them again. And the messages too would cease. I immediately, after she made the comment, saw the cops sprung from the hiding and arrested both of them on sight. Her comment... Well, it was proof that she was behind everything that was going on, and the look on Elena's face after it dawned upon her that she had been played like a fiddle. Well, boy, that was epic. Elena was detained while Carlos, who's not even 18 yet, was kept in juvie. My mother had promised to make Elena see hell if she did not let us be in peace, and <laughs> she meant it. She got the immigration office involved. The temporal work visa that Grandmother had gotten for Elena back years ago had since expired and she failed to renew it. She just kept working at Grandma's establishment and my mom was sure she had not gotten any job ever since it meant she was eligible for deportation. So, the immigration officers, after reviewing Elena's documents, decided to deport her. Carlos, who, by the way, is an American citizen by birth was also sent back to Mexico with his mother as he's not 18 years old and can't stay on his own and his mother did not want to be separated from him. My stepmom and stepbrother are currently in Mexico and I have my mother to thank for that. All right, guys, let's just think about for a second if OP was not able to get out of the house when the stepmother and, well, Carlos decided to do something about it. I want to know exactly from you guys what you would have done in that situation. I mean, if she could not get out of the back door, she would have been in trouble. Go ahead, drop your thoughts about this story. It was pretty obvious that the stepmom of this story was evil. I mean, she did everything she can to be spiteful, hateful, whatnot. But at the end of the story, it seems like a little justice was served because... Well, she got the cops involved and they weren't having it. So drop your thoughts down below. If you guys are new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I want to welcome you to today's video. If you want more daily videos, the best way to get it is easy. Subscribe to the channel, click that little bell notification icon. It'll alert you when I upload, which by the way is every single day. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya!